G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our small little backyard farm or in today's case front yard farm YouTube channel. Uh, I'm just doing a little bit of a walk around the front yard and we might take a wander out down, just down the side to show you a couple of root pouches we have on the go down there. Um, I haven't done an update here for a while so I don't think a lot has changed though. A lot of these beds have just been left fallow uh, through summer uh, but I do have some more plants that I will be popping in there soon. We might take you down the back and give you a bit of a look at them as well. So. Let's get cracking. So we'll start off here looking at the uh, wicking beds along the front. Please keep in mind though that we do live on a main road, so it can get a little bit noisy at times. This first wicking bed um, is supposed to be an asparagus bed, but this uh, cayenne pepper or cayenne chili is actually the star of the show here. It's kept fruiting all through winter, loaded with fruit. Whenever we need a chili, we just run out and grab one from here. All until the sun, the um, sunshine chilies took off. That is, uh, so. It gives us more fruit than we know what to do with. Every time we have visitors around, and I remember I tried to thrust a dozen or so uh, chilies in their hand as they leave. Um, but yeah, it's been a great one for us. Just means we've always had chili fresh on hand. I suppose that's the beauty of living in the subtropics. The asparagus here, uh, it has bounced back a little bit. Um, if you don't remember, this is the bed I had a uh, curl grub infestation in some sort of beetle larvae and they were eating the crowns. I think they actually damaged the crown in that corner so much that it died off and we only have the crowns in this little area here uh, left alive. So the bed was treated uh, with a, um, a treatment that is based on essential oils from what I could work out. And yeah, the asparagus is still going and I haven't seen many curl grubs as I've been digging around. Uh, and we have got, I noticed just here before, we have got a couple more spears coming through. So, you know, hopefully these things will bounce back over time. I've, I've taken virtually no spears off them all season. There's another little green one just down in there. I've nipped off a couple of the end bits and had a munch on them as I've been walking around, but that's about it. Just in front of it in the ground, we have a volunteer alfalfa or loosen plant as well. And these guys have beautiful little flowers that um, the bees and the other beneficials enjoy. This asparagus bed has done so-so. It's actually put on a um, second flush. Um, surprise, surprise, that happens when you feed your plants, Robert. But yeah, we had a couple of spears come up last week. I tended to let them go though, just being this late in the season. And as you can see there, from a male crown, because they got the little flowers on them, the female crowns obviously give you these berries and a lot of people will pull out the female crowns because they believe the energy goes into the berries rather than the creation of spears. Next bed over we have some rosella. Um, Dan sent me these um, seeds, Daniel. So they've done absolutely fantastically after I thinned them out. We've already had a couple flower and we have a load more buds on the way. So this variety here, whichever one it is, I'm not too sure, is definitely fruiting a lot faster than the ones we grew last year. And the bushes actually look a lot more compact. Then again, um, I did have the bed overcrowded and we've thinned it down to around about 10 plants. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, no, there's about nine plants in there. So yeah, hopefully we'll get a half decent harvest from this lot. This next bed over had the bugle squash. As you can see, there's the last fruit there. I just dug it, dug it out from behind the back corner of the bed. I actually had the vine growing up. There was a pole here and a bit of a um, twine for it to follow onto this bit of lattice work here. Uh, but yeah, it unfortunately wasn't the best producing uh, vine. We only got two fruit off it. This is why we just can't have good things here. The blooming Queensland fruit fly, I tell you what, this is our trombone squash, and as you can see by those holes there, she's got maggots in it. So she's actually doing her business right now, putting some more larvae in there. But now she's gone. So this one here was supposed to be a little bit of a uh, centerpiece of this clip, but I just pulled it out and I noticed um, that side it looks fine, but on this side here it's actually cracked open. So uh, what I might do is I'll grab a knife and we'll cut it round about there because I dare say this side here might be a bit manky and compostable but this side up here will be um, fairly good flesh so I'll be back in a tick. So just going to chop in my new knife, better show it off. I bought this off a, an Australian knife smith, thank you very much Ian. I'll just chop it here, cut it here I think. Oh look at that, awesome fruit, absolutely beautiful. So this will go into the house and we might roast it up and then pop it in the freezer. 
and we'll be able to use that in pumpkin soups and that sort of thing. So this section here, when I get inside, I will chop it back and see if there's uh, much flesh in there we can save. But, I mean, that's, that's a good kilo and a half, maybe two kilos worth of fruit there. So pretty impressed with that. Just leave that in there, somewhere to keep it safe. So this bed here, I'm going to feed it up with a little bit of compost. I've got a little bit left to spread around and it will end up being probably a winter bed at this point in time. Um, we might let it just sit for a little while and then I'll plant some brassicas into it. This bed here was our strawberry popcorn. It was looking absolutely fantastic. And then we had um, a really bad storm come through a few weeks ago. I think I posted a little bit in one of my um, Patreon compilation clips. Uh, we lost the banana tree out the back, it blew over. And when I got home, the majority of this corn was just laying down this way. And uh, some of them got very badly damaged. Uh, other corn never really recovered and they threw off like multiple little cobs here. Um, other ones, these guys here are pretty much all ready to pick, I think. Um, keep in mind, it is the strawberry popcorn, so the, um, the cobs are a little bit smaller than you would get with a normal sweet corn. So I'm, you know, not over the moon with the success of this variety, but, you know, we did have the storm in there that did knock them around a bit. So we might actually open one of these little cobs up and give you a bit of a gander. So we'll have a look at this one here, hey? See if it's dry. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful little cob. So, and yeah, they're pretty hard. I'd say that's ready to come off. So that's about as big as these cobs get. And they um, give you a nice little popcorn. So uh, I don't think they're really ready to pop yet. They might need to dry out a little bit more, but I might post a picture or give you a look in a future video on how they go. But I love the little design on them, just the little pattern. So out of all these plants, I'd say we'll probably get, I don't know, 15 to 20 decent cobs. I did notice um, the other week while I was shooting a clip for the Patreon folks that, you know, there are one or two of these cobs that were absolutely decimated by beetles. That one feels fine and so does that one there, but they are rather small. Uh, just to show you in the middle of this bed, we have uh, one of the red amaranth sort of um, <laughs> creating a bit of a beacon to where our place is, but very beautiful, spectacular plant. I'm just going to let that one go to seed up there, and I dare say we'll end up with amaranth popping up all over the front patch. So now that truck's passed, uh, these two wicking beds uh, pretty much have all been fed up with compost and just left to rest. I have left one bean in here that's giving us a couple every now and then, but there's a fair amount of um, rust and blight damage on them, so probably should come out so I don't spread it all around the rest of the patch. And this one here, yeah, just being left fallow. In the last bed here, now that truck's gone by, we've got the taro, and it is rather a jungle in there. Uh, we did leave these plants go over winter and we didn't harvest any, and they've put on some nice growth this season. Probably helps that I've fed it up a few times with the liquid fertilizer. And if we go in through the jungle here, you might be able to make out these longer broad leaves. There's some red turmeric that I left in there. Um, sorry, orange turmeric, the turmeric longer. And they look like they're doing all right as well. I mean, some of these plants have got some very nice thick bases. Hopefully they're going to um, get some nice fat roots on them. Um, I've actually had a couple of people lately share some taro recipes with us. So it'll be interesting to try them out. Um, I'm particularly interested in the dessert ones. Uh, just behind us here, we have the bananas. Uh, now the bananas, we do have one bunch of fruit on here and I've still left the flower bell on there. Um, I have been intending to do a clip on these bananas, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, it's a bit hard to see with the glare, so we might go around the other side. Just around the other side and you can see them a little bit better. A uh, fairly decent bunch of uh, bananas there. And that bell down the bottom does need to come off to put some more energy into the fruit itself. Um, we won't be using the bell in any recipes this time around. Um, the girls and I weren't particularly fussed on it. So we'll just turn it into a um, compostable item, I think, along with the other one from out the back. Uh, this um, branch I've had to string up using some rope because it was falling over to Pauline's side uh, right over the top of her walkway. So I didn't want her to hit her head. So I've just got the um, rope coming back here and it's tied onto the top of this frame. Now this framework is a couple of gates that Mark and Allison gave us. Thank you very much, folks. And it's acting as a bit of a trellis for our Chinese yam. And it's growing out of this little root pouch arrangement down here that's sitting in a tray, along with some Thai basil and also some more red amaranth with a beautiful red flower, if we can get the sun away from the back of it. 
So um, in this little bathtub, I'm actually in the um, process of rejuvenating this. Um, I've got a couple of those plants Chris gave me that I'd like to put out here. So the um, oregano's, it'll just keep surviving. I'll just transplant that somewhere else in the patch. I might put it down underneath the lime tree. And this Brazilian um, spinach, I gave a whole heap to Chris when he dropped off some plants the other week. Um, and I might propagate some more out of this yet. We'll just wait and see. And in this pouch here, we have the Hawaiian Sunshine Purple Sweet Potato. Uh, this is the one I tried to grow through winter and it didn't um, do much chop. Obviously, I left some root and rhizome sections in there and it's just exploded back into life. We've eaten a few of the greens, but I'm hoping to get some decent rhizomes out of there. Um, I suppose it helps that I've been giving it liquid feeds and also topped it up with some compost and a few other um, organic chicken-based fertilizers and seaweed ones, um, just so we can hopefully get some decent roots out of it. And this end pouch here, it's just been fed up with the compost, same deal. A few of the chicken pellet fertilizer, bits and pieces and seaweed. And hopefully we'll have a purple snake bean growing up that trellis very soon. So we'll just nip around to the side of the house. Down here is a little root pouch garden. Uh, it's going pretty well at the moment. The pine pineapples are definitely doing all right. The curry leaf tree as well. Um, I think I showed you these guys in the perennial garden clip. The uh, finger lime, it's um, doing fairly well. Put on a little bit of growth. Haven't seen any flowers though. Kaffir lime, still got some fruit on there. They really should come off and be de uh, zested for the freezer. The fig was a bit of a casualty of that storm we had. It blew over but it looks like we've got loads of small branches that we're going to try and strike into more plants. Um, I was chatting to Ruben on Patreon and he suggested that they may throw dwarf figs because this is a dwarf variety. So we'll have a crack and see how we go. And the pawpaws on here. Um, yeah, we've got four, sorry, five fruit on there, but the flowers don't seem to be um, creating more fruit. So I'm not too sure what the go is there. I've uh, started to feed it up with more liquid fertilizer in the last two weeks, so hopefully something might happen. It may need some more potassium, so I might add some of the 16% kelp powder fertilizer we mix up into a liquid. So I might take a bit of a wander down the back. But over here, I have a few other bits and pieces that Chris gave me. Um, Chris is a chap I met online through Facebook. And this is the second lot of veggies he came up and traded with me. I sent him home with a few bits and pieces and he dropped off these awesome bits and pieces. Uh, we have a green Malabar spinach. Um, the story behind that one is I bought a packet of green Malabar spinach seeds and he pointed out he'd done the same and when he grew them, they turned out to be purple. So he was kind enough uh, to strike a cutting from his green Malabar spinach. So it'll probably end up out the front there along with this he thinks it's called love lies bleeding amaranth it sort of cascades down rather than growing up on a single stem that may end up out the front or might end up out the back here over here we've got a green perennial tree collard and a purple one now these are spares that he had and he admittedly said that they're ones that didn't do that crash hot so he didn't plant them out at his place so with these ones, Chris suggested I take cuttings from the, the top center growths on both of them because they are a little bit leggy and um, haven't done the best so far and start them off as new plants. And he said, what that will also do is force shoots from the side leaves and I can cut them off at some point and turn them into new plants as well, strike them out. So that's the idea. We'll see how it goes. Uh, down here, he also gave me an Armenian um, cucumber because he did hear that I was going to sow some of my own seeds. Um, yeah, unfortunately, it's just been too hot to plant it out at the moment out the front there, so I've just left it be. And the same with the, um, whoops, the purple snake bean that he brought around. So there you go. There's a look at some of the plants that will make it out the front. Oh, and this one here is a, um, he thinks it's a cross between kale and a collard. He's not too sure at the moment. So, we're, yeah, it's got a couple of side shoots on it and the leaves aren't that bitter. So once it gets a little bit more growth on it, we'll start harvesting a few and see what we think. Worst comes to worst, it ends up as chook food when we get the new chooks. So I'm really looking forward to um, getting some of those plants out into the front patch. Um, yeah, like I said, though, it's going to be pretty hot tomorrow. So we might leave it till Sunday or maybe even Monday before they go out. Um, I could probably rig up a little bit of shade. We'll just wait and see. Um, but yeah, the rest of the patch um, out the back here, not a lot's going on. I might do an update clip in a week or two's time, just showing you um, some of the progress, some of the mulching that's gone on, hopefully by then, and some of the um, beds that have been removed for the chicken coop. 
Um, for those folks wanting a bit of an update on the crook fish in the aquaponics, um, one of the fish is starting to look like it's bouncing back, the lesion's getting smaller, the other two, they're still pretty much all staying the same. So uh, worst case scenario, in about a week's time, if there hasn't been a great improvement, um, I'll be isolating the fish tanks from the grow beds and yeah, I'll be dosing it up with salt. Thank you very much to Mr. John who's been helping me out with that and the other folks on Aquaponics Anonymous on Facebook. If you want a, a more in-depth update on that, you can click on that little link up there and um, suss out the update I posted a couple of days back. Um, but yeah, I will pretty much will leave it there. I do hope your gardens are booming and that you have enjoyed this clip. And if you'd like to see more in the future, uh, all you need to do is click on that little subscribe button down there and then check on the bell icon once it appears on the screen and you'll be sent notifications whenever we upload our clips to YouTube and you can come along and say g'day. I do hope that you're all well and happy and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers all.